So here I am again. <laughs> I don't know if it, this is working. Is, is it working? Huh? No. The first time Yes, no? No, it is. Oh, you want this one? I think I don't know. This, this, this one works. Okay. Ah, so now, now it is. It's working. Okay, it's working now. Um, so you have a double program with me. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to present this uh, activity, um, which is uh, currently completing its first round. And it's an activity that, um, that is, um, as we will see, led by ONEMA and the European Commission. Uh, the Water Framework Directive was a major um, milestone in European policy, and we can say it still is because we are far from implementing it fully as it was designed. And um, since it was seen uh, from the beginning that it was a complicated policy, um, a common implementation um, a strategy group was created, the CIS uh, was created uh, quickly uh, as a forum to uh, tackle the challenges raised by this implementation. Um, the common implementation strategies comes out of the, um, the, board, the meeting of the water directors of European member states, which created a number of working groups in different topics. And then there is an ad hoc activity, which is this science policy interface as related to water. Interfacing science and policy um, is something extremely natural in some European countries, and as you may be aware, it, it is not natural in Spain. Uh, we uh, constitute a case in which there is not a very long tradition in uh, doing research for policy support, and where um, in many instances there has not been a structured demand for scientific knowledge to feed um, policy implementation. There are amazing exceptions to this in, in different policy areas related to water and in different research groups, but uh, the situation in Spain exemplifies the need for an energic action in terms of policy interface in the field of water as related to the new challenges created by the, um, by the framework directive. So uh, this um, ad hoc activity, which sits there in the corner of the planification of, of the common implementation strategy, is what we are going to be discussing today. The objectives was to first support the implementation of the, of the policy with a dynamic interface. Then, on the other side, to boost the applicability of research results which were piling up in a number of areas. And third, to do some forward-looking and identify research needs for the coming years. So there has been um, three uh, tasks associated to the mandate, which is now coming to an end, which was first to develop an inventory of research and implementation needs, then to identify a valuable research which could be useful, and then improving the uh, transfer and usability of research. And um, this working principles was best effort on voluntary basis. Here comes another initiative which has no hard structures in it. It's just a, an association of a number of, of elements to make this work. Uh, it's ad hoc, so then it, it, it had a starting day and it had a finishing day. Um, mainly it's implemented through workshops that have, there has been three. Um, the workshops were named uh, Water Science Meets Policy, and it's a, in itself, and on a European perspective, it's a very ambitious uh, goal. Um, this ad hoc group is in close links with other groups for, from the CIS, reporting to the strategic coordination group, and it's connected to uh, recent initiatives in Europe, and that's why I'm sitting here, because we have been cooperating with the JPI, has been cooperating with this science policy interface since our beginning, which was more or less at the beginning of the operation of the CSSPI. The same can be said about the EAP, and therefore um, this group, in the person of, of Frédéric, is involved in both initiatives, uh, and it's a major piece in both of them. The methodology, well, the, these annual events uh, are organized as part of the activity of this ad hoc group, 
and it's fed by interactions with the different common implementation strategy groups, different um, FP6, FP7 consortia, which are specialized on science policy interfacing, and also with the contribution from a number of other initiatives, such as the Joint Programming Initiative. Results. Well, um, the way this has been organized is that uh, the leading organization and the secretariat has been held by ONEMA and assisted by Organization International de Law, OYO. And um, there is a co-led leadership with DGRTD, with supporting um, liaison officer there, and a number of, of uh, projects related to SPI, and it's important to, uh, to name here what are these streams, stepwise, and PSI Connect, and some of the of the partners here in the audience know quite a bit about these projects which are, were presented partially yesterday. So um, there are CSPI correspondents in each CIS group. This is just an organizational issue which refers to the fact that uh, it's very important to keep the science policy interface connected to all policy domain areas, right? Um, this has been a, a continued emphasis on uh, identifying focal points in the different member states so as to spread this, um, this energy into the member states and uh, to address the wider science policy interface community in Europe. Um, well, the first, um, the first event was held in 2010. The, the participation has always been very wide and involving scientific community, end users, companies, governments, agencies. This has been, have been a set of very interesting workshops uh, with a strong interactions in the round tables, with uh, the identification of areas, topics, research needs, material which is very important in the light of the current activities of Horizon 2020, programming for our joint uh, activities, and the innovation partnership. In the second event in, uh, in 2011, was devoted to ecosystem services, a very um, innovative issue in Europe, although in other areas of the world there has been more experience has been accumulated. So there were recommendations issues on, on how these ecosystem services have to use, can be used and valued with tangible examples. CSSPA has always been very interested on um, not populating the theoretical domain, on, on uh, uh, being practical in their approach because they, they recognize that they need to be continuously feeding policy. And then our research gaps in the area of ecosystem services were identified. Then again, participation was very large. And um, these events have been a very interesting occasion for mingling in this interface between science and, and policy, which is often not very explicit in Europe. And then the, the last event was held in, in Brussels uh, last year, right, in November. And uh, there, were, there was a presentation of SPA success stories. There are a few, very interesting one, on the elaboration of structures, mechanisms, and actors for renewed efforts in SPI, methods and tools for the customization of information. And um, the three the events, the SECT, has been uh, very successful as recognized by the Commission and by scientists, not only in the social sciences domain, but in the, in the whole of the scientific disciplines related to the framework, um, to the framework directive, who recognize that very often our research results uh, feed the journals more than the policy areas. So uh, there has been more uh, research related to uh, to uh, various meetings uh, related to the this steering committee meeting, brainstorming uh, um, was performed in November uh, 2011 on a number of, of issues, and then there has been thematic presentations to this committee covering the relevant groups. So um, the task of reporting back to the CIS uh, core has been performed extensively, and that they have been provided with results on a regular basis. Um, there has been um, perform also a compilation of these policy briefs that were mentioned yesterday uh, from uh, up to 23 EU-funded research projects. 
These policy briefs have been analyzed for their applicability, for their usefulness, and a proposal was made on a template for policy briefs to, uh, based on, on the one used by Cerocore, which is expected to be um, a success in its application in future uh, projects. Now, uh, there has been also a new release of WISE RT RTD, which is this database for um, research and projects with about uh, 1,000 projects from FP3 to FP7, uh, but also live and interreg selected on their uh, interfacing capacity with the policy areas of the framework directive. So these projects have been up up uploaded and they are available already uh, on a number of, um, of applications for the identification of these interfaces. Projects have also been uh, classified in terms of uh, a mapping per CIS topic and research areas so that um, the different groups working on, on the common implementation strategy can readily identify the resources available in, uh, in FP7 and FP6 projects so they can resort to them for policy support. So work has been uh, cut in both sides and um, this mapping of 10 years have been identified in in covering a number of, of projects and areas of the framework program involving Marie Curie, INCO, um, a number of different areas and uh, scientific domains. All, all this information is available in Europa, so uh, you can actually uh, go to this uh, report uh, produced by, by them. <clears throat> then there has been also uh, perform an evaluation of the research needs for each CIS group, and, and the mapping, for, mapping of knowledge has been performed here. We have an example of how on a specific research issue, you can identify a research need. You can see how this research need has been identified and described, worded, right? So that there is an explicit need for um, research issues. And also, uh, there is a listing of the projects in the framework program which have been addressing the different um, research needs, at least partially, right? So that more um, brokerage can be performed around these projects. So the lesson learned. Well, time is a very limited resource. Uh, the key persons uh, who can contribute to this are extremely busy. They've been volunteering their time, uh, uh, but they all suffer from work overload, and that has been a limiting uh, factor. Um, Knowledge exchange has been seen as, an, uh, as a continuum. So uh, this calls for a number of different activities. Permanent interaction, dialogue, would be the most important one. The relevance of stress in the national and regional levels. Brussels is unable to analyze and to um, streamline their policies in isolation. So that's why we see additional efforts to reach out to uh, to different uh, policy um, domains. And um, there is a need to uh, develop, to further develop research questions and policy questions on co-creation and sharing of knowledge. And this effort is, is currently being taken on board by a number of additional initiatives. The, the providing the templates, for instance, for poly-free briefs is not sufficient. We, uh, I mean, in the, in the CSSPI, it has been identified a whole number of these things are done in a repetitive fashion. Uh, we don't get to deepen into this, uh, the policy aspects of research, and then we don't get the, the feedback that elicited the funding of the project. So there's a certain failure there in, this, in the closing of this loop. And the, the expected results from this project should be known at the start. So there has been, uh, there needs to be a feedback looks to the final outcomes of the projects. So recommendations to continue to move on from this ad hoc structure to a more systematic activity, which is still to be shaped up. There has to be a, con a sustained SPA network for water-related areas. Um, it is very important to, uh, to have the science policy interface um, embedded in all the levels of the CIS to make sure that there is proper implementation. Then there is a need to enhance the transfer and the sharing of knowledge in a number of, of areas through uh, testing and validating tools to developing guidance to the use of repositories like the one we have seen and alert systems. 
and to consolidate and implement a methodology for more regular mapping of research and prioritization of, of the research gaps. So what is next? It is not clear at this time. There, will, there, there was this third annual event. There still needs to be a report to the poem. There will be a compound report on the three years of activity and a presentation to the water directors. And the, this first three-year mandate needs to be assessed in order to figure out uh, the follow-up activities. So, Frederic, thanks <laughs> you all for your attention. <laughs>